And by the way, um, Eric, thanks for not taking my Sarah Young ones. I was so afraid that you were going to take my. Because the minute you said Sarah Young, I'm a huge fan of hers too. And uh, what was really interesting to me is whenever I read a devotional that hits me, I note it. And what I realized is uh, it was two devotionals from the same day that I ended up capturing because I thought it was going to move me. And what I think it really focuses on is there's a few Bible passages in there, but the whole theme of it was how uh, we can get lose sight of God because of the fact that we get controlled by our own thoughts and our own goals. And so it says, a part of the devotional says, when your mind goes into neutral and your thoughts flow freely, you tend to feel anxious and alone. Your focus becomes problem solving to get your mind back into gear just turn towards me, bringing yourself and your problems into my presence. Because each moment you can choose to practice my presence or to practice the presence of problems. And that one hit me so hard as I was reading it because I've just gone back in my life where I was running into some challenges and that I asked myself, did I choose to really give it all to God? Or did I choose, like we're all taught sometimes just to solve problems all the time, did I try to do it on my own? And this asks you to take a step back. And in the Bible passage, one of them that um, they highlight in this devotional was from Exodus 33, 14, which said the Lord rep replied, my presence will go with you and I will give you rest. It's so, I think, innate now for us when we have a problem to go out and try to solve it rather than just taking a step back and maybe sitting down in prayer saying, Lord, I just got something. I have no idea what to do with it. Can you give me some guidance? And that is something that I took away from that that one. And on the exact same day, um, it was almost like in Jesus always, she was doing the same thing, talking about it, where she says, don't get so focused on what you want that you miss the things that I've prepared for you. Trust me enough to let go of your expectations and demands be still and know that I am God. Because sometimes you obstruct the very things you desire by trying too hard to make things go according to your will and timing. Instead of striving to be in control so you can get what you want, seek my face, talk with me openly and rest for a while in my presence. When you are feeling more refreshed, invite me to show you the way forward. And I think what was so powerful about this was sometimes you just don't know what to say. I grew up in a faith a religion where you were given formulate prayers to say all the time and when they're not your words your own words that you make up it can be very difficult to do this and as i was starting to look through this uh the bible passage from romans 12 2 that they uh, assigned to this was do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind then you'll be able to test and approve what god's will is his good pleasing and perfect will mm -hmm. Uh, for me, it was something that really enlightened me because I had mentioned this uh, at our men's group on Thursday night that I attended where when I first moved down here uh, and I would go out and do these presentations for work, I would always talk about how I was enlightened by um, something a sports psychologist that I worked with me had said. He had worked with all of the top LPGA players, the top PGA players and tennis players. And one of the people that he worked with uh, was Yvonne Lendl. I don't know if you follow Von Lundell um, from tennis, but when I was growing up, that guy was the king of cool. Uh, you couldn't tell if he was mad. You couldn't tell if he was upset during the match. You couldn't tell if he was losing um, because he just didn't show any emotion. And so the sports psychologist in one of the interviews asked him, he said, uh, do you ever have any stress? And Von Lundell's answer was, uh, no, I don't have any stress. And if you think about it, he's playing in these tournaments where he can win a lot of money. How can you not have stress in there? Right. So he asked him, why don't you have any stress? And Yvonne Lundell in the interview said, um, because stress is the result of not being prepared for the things that you can control. And so from 2006 up until last week, that was kind of the thought process that I had, which stress is the result of not being prepared for the things that you can control. And then having read these devotionals and these Bible passages, I have changed my perspective now to the fact that stress is the result 
of not letting God control what he can control. And that was, to me, the big shift from reading these uh, devotionals and Bible verses. Is I think in a world where we could be tempted to be in control of everything, we can end up with nothing unless we really give God the control of everything that we need in our lives. That's so yeah. true. It's powerful. I mean, you know, Psalm 4610, be still and know that I am God. I mean, that is, we must have two pictures in our house. In different places that I walk past every day. That's that is actually my wife's probably her all-time favorite. Um, and and you're right about you know, taking trying to take too much control. That's what we do in our lives. It's it's the way that God made us, but He also wants us to say, okay, you know what? I made you to have a a, a happy life. You should be happy. But in order to do that, you have to let go and come back to me and that i think is 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 one of the frailties of, of of that that beautiful gift that god gave us is to have that choice of what we want to do every day while he's yearning for us to well you know we're clamoring through our day stressing uh, and he's probably just sitting back saying okay well watch my watch here sooner or later simon eric chris or bobby they're gonna they're going to get something and they're going to come back, but I'm just going to sit here and watch. And, and I often wonder sometimes, you know, it's what I call post-it notes to God. You know, when it's my time, I've got all these ideas of post-it notes, of tons of questions that he's probably going to be like, okay, you know, wow, we've got an eternity here. There's someone else that wants to talk to me. But that'd be one of them is, is do you really, do, you're probably laughing, right? Is it be in my post-it note to God? Are you laughing when you're watching me struggle and run around in a circle like a rat? Um, and we all have to remember that we have to come we, where we have to come back to. And I think that's the same thing for all four of us. Again, four people, four brothers in different places connected through this, our, our, our faith and being on, on fire for Christ. Everything correlated this morning yeah, for all four of us. So thank you, Simon. You know, yeah, I love no that. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. That, that's great, Simon. I mean, you know, I, I look at, because you talk about, stress and the Lord, you know, Lord's like, Hey, everything I do for you is sufficient. And you know, I'm very fortunate today. Um, you know, uh, uh, being in the position I'm at in the company that I work with, you know, we're not a, we're not a Christian company, but we're just a company run by a bunch of Christians, you know, so, which is very nice to be around because I haven't always been in that environment and I do understand what stress is all about. And, you know, I saw a great Facebook post, matter of fact, last night, and I, I hope I can do it justice, but it was, you can spend all your days at work and away from your family and the folks at work or the employer, once you are gone, won't remember you, but your family will remember that you weren't there. And I used to fall into that. And I know, you know, we can have so many idols today and work can be one of them. You know, money can be another one. You know, we all know that. And allowing ourselves to get caught up in the stress of needing things to get done. It, it, it's, it's I, w I wish I could say I've perfected it, but I'll never be perfect, right? But I, uh, I definitely cope so much better today. And once again, it is, it is due to diving into God's word and being able to, to cope with situations because now my look on it is first of all lord you got it i hand everything over to the lord you got it and number two is it doesn't you know if there's a situation going on at my workplace or whatever it may be and it's later in the evening there's no use of me taking care of it right now because guess what it's going to be there in the morning anyway and i uh, and, and the lord's really helped me with that and I, i've had some you know and another thing is and, and it's something i, I I can only stress the, to, to people out here is I've had great mentors in my life, mentors in my profession and mentors on, you know, from church where we've had, I've really had godly men come to me and put their arm around me, you know, when I was a younger man, that's really shaped me to where I am today. And now, now it's, that you know, it's, it's like passing it forward. Now it's my time to do that. And I think what you were talking about right there is, I mean, that's something that everybody experiences. And once again, it's just 
how do we allow God to intervene and how do we allow, see, that's the thing. How do we allow, right? How do we allow? We've got to get rid of the control and just let, let God do his thing because you know what, when he does his thing, you know, we don't have to worry about it. So, so thank you. Yeah. Yeah. I appreciate that too, Simon. I mean, it's, sometimes it, and that's the biggest part is when god just smacks you upside the head and goes okay you're gonna let me be god now and you're like <laughs> so oh yeah true. and then it's amazing how things work out that way it was like okay when you stop and let him be god things take a totally different turn and you, you know what I, I love about what you've all said is you've humanized a vision for god eric when you're talking about does god laugh when all my post-it notes <laughs> come to me right and then and then Bobby, when you just said what you said, I'm like, I'm envisioning God just kind of sitting there going, all right, are you, are you done now? Are you ready for me to, to help you? Because I can help you. You know, those are the things that I think make a difference to somebody when you look at it. And when you talk to Chris about this Christ explosion, that's what you want is for God's force and spirit and presence to be so strong that it just doesn't trickle. It erupts out. And that's when it moves, moves the world. And what I, I really realized is what I value about what Sarah Young does with her devotionals is you can look at a Bible verse but not know a perspective. And what I really found myself doing now is I'll read her devotionals first before I read any of my verses of the day. Because it seems like what she's able to do is say, okay, here's your time. Let's figure out how to make it most efficient for you, which is most most of us try to do. Instead of trying to leaf through all these pages of the Bible, it does, and it doesn't have to be Sarah Young for everybody. If there's a devotional that really impacts you, this is the value of a devotional because I never really saw it before. And now I can't imagine my day without it. And I think what happens when we go through this is together we can help each other because now not only do we have Sarah Young, we've got three other people and hopefully more that want to join us on this that can say let me show you what helped me and then we end up building this whole library of help for each other is really what we can end up doing here and if we do that we're just going to glorify god along the way and make this world hopefully a better place because to your point chris there's you know there's an abundance of stress triggers out there all you got to do is either go outside turn on the tv go on the internet go on social media and figure that out this Christ explosion could help create an abundance of optimism and hope for people. And for that, I'm thankful for you, all of you just taking the time to try this and seeing how it works because your stories move me and I hope it really helps move other people too. So, any closing thoughts on your part that you'd want to share as we wrap up the session? Well, I'll, I'll start with this is first of all, um, thank you guys for being on here. It's, this is, you know, once again, just energizing for me. It's, it's great to be able to talk with other, you know, believers, other men. And I, and, and, and I know it's not just men, you know, but yeah, you know, when we hear the word Christ follower, when people hear the word Christ follower, sometimes they take that as weak or meek, you know, and, and meekness is not weakness, right? Because, I mean, I mean, I mean, if you, if you I mean, I, I'm a huge avid, you know, hunter, fisherman, kayaker, I mean, you name it, right? So there's nothing weak about being a Christ follower. As a matter of fact, it takes a really strong person to do that. So I, I appreciate each and every one of you guys being on this uh, with me. And thank you, Simon, for the invite on that. But I think that's something that we've got to make sure that people you know, know that being a Christ follower is, I mean, man, it takes a strong person to really do that and to be like that and to stand up for what's really right. You know, so I have, uh, that, that's really my closing thoughts. Thank you for that. My closing thoughts, I'm just, I'm just grateful to, to have found, you know, three brothers in Christ. And in such a short time, I mean, Simon, you and I have known each other quite some time, but both Bobby and Chris, the first time we spoke, there was just, it, it, it really got to my heart and my core that I thought, you know, these are two gentlemen that I want to get to know better and, and already are brothers. 
that I want to spend as much time as possible, even though we're so far away. So I just, I, I, I'm, I'm thankful, Simon, for you bringing us all together. Yeah. Happy you're on with us. Thank you so much for being on this journey. Bobby? Well, I don't get to interact with many Christ followers on a daily basis uh, at work. Uh, I'm really not allowed to discuss it much at work. And that's a large part of my life because I'm there so often. So being able to get together with like-minded people and just discuss and empty out my heart and say what I want to say and hear other men, men, women, anybody just speak and and go, yeah, yeah, that's me. Yeah, I understand that. This is a, it was a huge way for me or a huge win for this weekend for me. A uh, great way to start off my day. Uh, I, I, need to, I need this. I think most of us need this. And um, I'm just very humbled that you all allowed me to be a part of this. And you know, I'm so grateful to have met Chris and Eric and, uh, you know, know you, Simon, and I'm humbled to have known you. And this is just, this is great. And I thank you for it. Well, and you know what I love about what we're doing together on this is you mentioned that um, being a follower of Christ doesn't mean we're weak. It means we're strong. Mm -hmm. But what I love that, that you didn't say, or none of us said, is that we're not, we don't want to be perfect because we know we can't. And it just reminded me that we just have to, with God, we can be strong because we're not perfect. And it's a line that um, it's going to be in a song that we're doing at this church service tomorrow that sticks out in my high, mind all the time from um, Father's House, where the, the line in the verse is, you never wanted perfect, you just wanted my heart. And what I have here and what I see are three brothers, and hopefully I want to have sisters in Christ on the show too and get pe more people on here. Nobody's saying that we're perfect. What we're saying is because we're imperfect, we need these fuelings from God, this Christ explosion to help take us through the day so that we can be strong because without him we can't. And um, so thank you for this. Looking forward to the next episode. And for those of you who are watching who would like to be part of it, just go ahead and hit subscribe on the channel and then drop a comment that you'd like to be part of the show and we'll send you an invite um, for the next one that we'll be filming. So Eric, Bobby, Chris, thank you so much for being part of this episode of Coffee with Christ Bible Blessings. And uh, we look forward to hearing more about your cups of coffee, but more importantly, how God's gotten you through the week, through his words and the devotionals that we've read. Thank you, guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Sam.